luminaires. You know, we, because we're, we're in this beautiful Tampa area so close to the salt water, we, we have special consideration. So we offer a variety of finishes. We have painted finishes. They're economical. But because they are painted, just like your car, you don't ever wash your car, don't ever wax your car, the paint's going to peel. You, you've got maintenance requirements on a painted fixture. So you've got to have cleaning maintenance. We offer anodized finishes. We offer some clear anodized finishes. We refer to that as our SSA line. We offer some other black anodized finishes on some of our other products. There's less maintenance on those. There's no paint to peel. The anodization process is a molecular change into the metal, in the outer layers of the metal. And then there is a protective coating placed over it. For coastal environments, the, uh, the anodized finishes hold up very well, especially the SSA finishes, the clear anodized finishes. They're, they're a great choice for coastal environments. They will retain the same basic look over time. We also have natural brass. And these brass finish finishes are, you know, quite often it, it's the mainstay of a lot of the outdoor lighting. Uh, the brass will last a long time. Unlike the anodized, however, it's not going to stay looking the same. So brass, we have less maintenance required. It's really the first choice for coastal environments. The difference, though, between it and the anodized finishes are that it's going to patina over time, give you this nice, earthy, natural look. Each fixture will kind of be somewhat unique. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit about the components that make up an LED light or luminaire. We have drivers, OK? The purpose of the driver is it converts the AC power that comes into the light, or DC power. Our lights will work equally well with AC or DC. And it turns that into a, a, a DC constant current. That is what we need to drive through the LEDs. You don't put voltage across the LEDs. You put current through LEDs. There will be a natural voltage developed, but current is the way you control LEDs and you maintain control over them. If we increase that DC constant current out of the driver into the LEDs, the effect is the LEDs get brighter. This is how we change our light outputs. We drive LEDs harder, we drive them less. In a control system, that's effectively what they do too to demo. We have light engines. Those are the, uh, I've heard them referred to as many things, but they're, they're typically little circular boards, sometimes they're rectangular boards, and they have the LEDs mounted on them. They, can, they take that DC constant current that the driver produces and it turns it into two things. It turns it into heat, that's the enemy of LEDs, and light, that's the objective of the LEDs. Presently, while LED technology is hands down, you know, uh, compared to your normal incandescent type technologies, you're going to get anywhere from 50 to 70 to 80 percent energy savings depending on the quality of the LEDs and some of the other aspects of the system. They do produce heat. Presently, the state of the art in LEDs is they're knocking on the door 30 percent efficiency. 30 percent of the power that goes into the LED produces light. The other 70%, sometimes 75%, produces heat. It's important in LED lights that you control the heat because heat is an enemy in multiple ways. One, too much heat will shorten the lifetime of LEDs. I can tell you a garden light, 
we, we have a, a temperature measurement we make on the LEDs. It's called the solder point measurement. We actually take a thermocouple and attach it to the solder and measure how hot it gets. It allows us to understand how hot the LED gets on the inside. And that's the thing that controls its life. It also controls its light output. One of the things I will tell you is that the solder points on Garden Light product are very good. This isn't the only lighting company I've ever worked for. And trust me, when I say the solder points are very good, they are. The temperatures are low. That's important for the life of the LED, but it's also important for the light output of the LED. Because as an LED gets hotter, you start losing light output. You know, you, you can lose 5-10% of the light output if we allow them to get too hot. Because our solder points are so good, we have very little variation in the light output. Even when we, you know, the difference between when we first turn it on and an hour later when it's completely thermally stabilized, you, we, we, you will see a slight difference, but it's not nearly as large as many, many other people's lights. Many other people will uh, allow the solder point to get higher. It's allowed. It shortens the length of the light, but it puts out less light. That's the way they try to push the LEDs as hard as they can to try to get Melcom for as much as they can in terms of dollars. You don't see that at Garden Light. We, we push the LEDs sometimes a little hard, but because we are able to have such good thermal performance, we lose very little light. So we, we, we get the benefit of, I call it free light, because we keep the temperatures of the LEDs down. Part of most of our lights, not all of them, but most of our lights involve optics. And what, what, what's the role of an optic in it? Well, it redirects the light. If any of you have seen our X light, we shoot the LED straight up in the air, but the light comes out this way. So that's an example of redirection of light. We actually make it do a 90 degree turn. They focus the light. Those of you who have ever used our, our 12 degree optics, maybe to light a flagpole, know that we collimate the light and make a very, very tight beam. Uh, some of you who have used the new Micromax, we actually spread the light. We even it out and spread it wider than what a normal LED would put out. That was driven by comments from many of you coming in. Can we have it a little wider? Handling requirements, and this is important uh, for people in the field to understand these aspects. One, drivers and light engines, they're electronic assemblies. They're, they're like a circuit board in your computer, in your TV. They're electronic assemblies. They're, they're not light bulbs. Even when we had light bulbs, though, I think most of you know that you, you weren't supposed to touch the halogen bulb with your bare hands. You get the handles on there and they're going to fail early. So, you know, even in the days of halogen, there were handling requirements. The handling requirements for today's lights, the LED solid state lights, are similar but a little different. Electronics assemblies are subject to static damage. So it's important that if you are working on a light that we equalize the potentials. I'm not going to run through how to do that, but if any of you are interested, we can certainly help you with that. We've actually uh, made some new light engines that should be going to the field in the future, which will actually make some of the handling requirements less stringent for you. <laughs> optics. Optics, they depreciate. They, they don't work as well if you get them dirty, if you get them dusty, if you get your hand oils on them. You know, it, it, it tends to distort the light. You lose a little something. So when you handle optics, we, we need to do so in a manner that allows them to be as good as they can be. 
You know, if you, if you have an optic and you drop it in the dirt and you stick it back in a fixture and you don't bother cleaning it off, well, we're going to lose a little light, you know. So, you know, recognize what it is and treat it accordingly.